Interactive. Covering the latest in wrestling and beyond, you're listening to the RCWR Show Weekend Edition with your host, Lee Sanders. Weekend edition of the RCWR Show. Your host right here, the Black Avenger, a.k.a. the Black Azrael, Lee Sanders. Thank you all so much for checking out this episode. And hey, it's cool to be going out on a high note as we wrap up the month of March. As we make our way into April, a.k.a. WrestleMania month. And our special guest that's going to be coming in at this time is the lead singer, of the band Tanandra. If you like progressive rock, if you like metal, hard rock, this is definitely the band that you'll want to check out. Let me tell you, folks, and I am not bullshitting you guys around. I have checked out their material off and on this week as they have several EPs that's running around in the iTunes store. And I just scooped them all up and I just love their material. They've been putting out EPs since 2010. And I'm ready to see an actual LP come out. Maybe as we are interviewing our special guests, we can get a little bit of insight into what's going on with it. But you want to talk about a little bit of influences in the in, in, in the voice and the band itself. Kind of has a little touch of a Jada Pickett Smith meets Tina Turner, classic Tina Turner, when she was kind of pushing into the whole rock thing for a little bit. That just kind of gives you a taste of what this band is about. They definitely have that bit of a influence of whole with Courtney Love right before things just started going down all spiral with the band. Definitely got all those elements in it. Even got a little bit of Kitty. And I am a huge Kitty fan, let me tell you guys. Uh, even got a little touch of heart. If you listen closely, even has a has a touch of that band as well. Very proud to be welcoming our special guest at this time, she is the beautiful and the lovely Tanya Medina from the rock band Tanandra. Ladies and gentlemen, here she is. Tanya, how are you doing this afternoon? Welcome to the show. I'm doing great. Hey, thank you guys so much for having me. Hey, listeners, thank you guys so much for, for taking a moment to stop and, and uh, enjoy this little craziness that we're about to embark on. But, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. And it's... Oh. Uh, you're right. I'm going to correct you. It's Tanadra. Tanadra. Ah, uh, there you go. Tanadra. See, I can see that rolls off my tongue better than Fandango. You know, I I I can I can work with that. Yeah, yeah. Tanadra. It's supposed it's supposed to roll off your tongue. If it's not rolling off your tongue, then you're not doing it right. No, I'm not doing it right. Obviously, no, no. And I've done a lot of rolling with my tongue, and I, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but but Tanandra, all right. Uh, so so tell me, you know, because I think we we should share the story with the folks that's listening, and uh, it, it's amazing how things just come full circle. I, I and I know you say you know you have a potty mouth, so let's just have at it. It's the weekend, let loose, fuck shit, damn Scooby Doo, doo bebop, you know. Um, true well, story. Shit. I like it. There you go. All right. So so earlier this month, we were, and if you guys you remember, we were supposed to have a special guest that was supposed to come by and help us close up our one-year anniversary month. And, you know, that didn't play out. And uh, true story, I was just kicking back. I think it was last weekend, and uh, I received this email from Tanya, and, and she, you know, told me, you know, what, what she was about. And the thing I loved about this, it, it was a good read. You know, it was like I'm hooked because it just oozed of personality, unlike some of the requests that I get from some people that say, hey, I'd like to be on the show. I, I get like this freaking 12-page, you know, it's like, are you trying to write a freaking manuscript? You're writing a Bible <laughs> section? You're like, you know, why are you giving me all this to read? It's like, what the hell? And, and hers was just, it was to the point, but it was very friendly and it just reflected so greatly your personality and the fact that uh you know you're in the, the rock slash metal i was like oh my god that's a kick ass combination and then and for before you guys say oh my god you're racist look i'm black okay but to, to, okay to hear that you know tanya is black a black musician covering Rock slash metal. I said, "My God, this is a damn good combination." Okay, let me test out the music. Let's see how it sounds. And 
I was hooked. Like one of the first songs I listened to uh, was "Release You." Then I uh, backtracked a little more. I listened to "Danny," and uh, yeah. I was like, "Okay, I just wanna." And I literally just went to iTunes after that, and I just bought up everything that I could. Ah, and, thank uh, you. Oh, don't thank you. I mean, the material was just freaking awesome. And uh, folks, need I mention? She also has a little bit of a wrestling uh, uh, background, so to speak. Uh, tell the folks uh, about that as, as we kind of guide them into your journey uh, as, as a musician. Uh, well, okay, well, music has always been in my blood, and uh, rock music, you know, I've, I I love, you know, and, and constantly push myself into to getting into rock. And going back to Once Upon a Time, uh, I remember my first, you know, a serious boyfriend would tell me, you know, we'd watch wrestling, and he would say, you should definitely try for, like, the WWE Divas. And I'm like, yeah, that's, you know, not going to happen. You know, what shot do I have? Need management, yada, yada, yada. And they used to have those tryouts, you know, you know, when reality TV came into play, and you would have, like, the tryouts you go through the audition phase. And I went right to the punch. You know, they had, like, various set-up places where you could audition in New York, you know, L.A. I just, you know what, I know there's the offices in Stanford. I'm not that far. I just think if we could drive out there and go, you know, we'll bring the outfit, we'll be able to flex, we'll show them what we can do, you know, talk about some of our martial arts background, yada, yada. And it was like, they seemed very impressed. They let me get through my whole spiel. <laughs> and next thing you know, it's like, okay, well, here it takes a little while, we're sitting, we're talking, and it's like, you know, 45 minutes to an hour later. And they're like, wow, you, you're, you are very pretty, and it would be great. I think maybe just a little bit more experience, and you're a little older. And I was like, okay, no problem. And I left. I'm sure they heard it under my breath. I was like, you're a fucking lost. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where that went. But um, and when I lived in the, you know, the city when I first got here, I started doing a little bit of bartending. And right in Times Square, uh, you know, it's like the heart of everything touristy. Well, there was the WWF, WWE at the time, you know, building. And it was, uh, I bartended there. And it's just a huge tourist trap. I mean, you get people of old, people of young, and it's just, it's, I mean, what's amazing about it is, you know, you have fans of the wrestling category that have their loyal fans from, I'm talking about Hulk Hogan's days, you know, and, and we'll get into that, the whole Hulk, Hulk Hogan and Sting facade. I can't believe Sting just fucking chewed him up live. But, you know, he kind of, he kind of put Hulk in his place, you know, Hulk. He's a great guy, you know, wonderful and mighty. And we'll get into that a little later, I'm sure, but I have, I'd like to talk about that. But um, it, it's just been it's been a, a fun journey uh, in the sense of that. And then getting into music uh, here was the greatest place to try and get into. But it was tough for me as like a black female and trying to get into rock where, you know, I'd open my voice and I'd sing. And they're like, yeah, it's great. But I think they were nervous because they're looking forward to that that white guy or the white girl. And it's like, I don't know if we're ready for that yet. And then it wasn't until I, I channeled in. Everything you see from Tanaja has been done from me in-house. You know, I have a great producer that I met through the Internet, named Maroon Chinoy, who's just got Grammy nominated this year. He was at the Grammys, and I was, like, so proud to be, like, the first rock chick to work with this person as Grammy nominated. So we're doing things right. And then the website, you know, I put together, you know, we branded um, the – the Facebook, which now is close to 24,000 fans. And I'm, I mean, I'm a day and night person. It's not just the music, it's the business. And if this is something that I want to do, you know, full force, it's, it, you have to realize you can't just pick up a mic and open your mouth and say, here I am, you have this big voice, unless you're signed with a label that even then, you know, you're pretty much going to be doing shitloads of work, you know. So I'm figuring, you know, why not take the route of being an independent artist and really showcasing what an independent artist can do? And I, I thank all the guys that turned me down. You know, it was like it was like it was freaking like no joke, like American Idol. You go to different auditions, and everybody was like a Simon Cow to me, and they're like, and yeah, you sound wonderful, but you're not the right look. You know, I'm like, go oh, fuck yourself. You know, and so it, it pushed me to to really put my best foot forward. And you know, I, even to this day, I'm still working hard, sleepless nights. I mean, I don't even know where the hours go anymore, and it's just been amazing. And uh, yeah, and I actually have a side band that merged out of Tanadra called Sands End, uh, which is just phenomenal. I mean, if you listen to the music, we, we are considered your uh, first epic rock band. And when I say epic, it's in the sense that we don't have a category. You know, we're, we are in the alternative progressive category, but we're redefining it. 
And that, that's just the beautiful part of having the confidence to say, you know what, we can do, as long as we put our best foot forward and we believe in this music and we, we, no matter what anybody says, this is our focus, you're going to channel out there so many people that are going to be geared towards that. And I think the San Zin route that we're going is more of the musician's band, and it'll gear towards those guys first, and then it'll garner towards more of the fan fans that'll get it, you know, later on. So, yeah, that's, that's my journey in a nutshell. Is that the whole hour right there? <laughs> no, never. Never. And if, it, and if that was the hour, that, damn, that was a fun hour. Um, <laughs> I can relate to that. You know, what had went down with uh, you going over there trying out for a diva, because true story, um, and it, it's rare I, tear, I tell this story, but uh, uh, my best friend, lover to death, uh, like my pretend sister, I, I remember years back, you know, when we still had the uh, WWE store and the restaurant out there in New York, I, I remember uh, how excited she was when WWE had first launched their whole uh, Tough Enough and their whole uh, Diva Surf that contest. Yeah, yeah she, that was it. you know, you know, and she had that that look, uh, and I'm not BSing you guys. She looked like Jazz. If you remember uh, Jazz, yeah, I mean, she had the muscles, all that, but her face was prettier. I mean, just picture the body of Jazz and, and picture the face of, of uh, God, if, if, I could, if I could put a face out there. Uh, yeah, maybe a, just maybe, uh, maybe, hold up my picture. <laughs> maybe. Oh, look, look, yeah, actually kind of kind of close to how you look mixed in with well, Eve Torres. Mixed in with Eve Torres, that would be the best yeah, comparison that's I could make. Hot. Yeah, that is hot. and I mean, I mean, she had the guns and everything, you know, real nice and built. And she's like, "I'm gonna get in on this." And uh, she's like, "I need your help. Let's let's see if we can put a video package together." And I remember we stayed up from like two in the morning up until like nine o'clock, just working on different montages of her working out and telling her story why she wants to uh, go into the WWE and. Her whole backdrop was that she was inspired by China, and um, you know, uh, of course, one of the yeah, originals right there. That's like, exactly, exactly, and you know, and she wanted to be that that first ever WWE Women's Champion, and um, WWE that called her. They said, "Yeah, you got to, you know, we, we saw your stuff. We like your tape. Yeah, come on down here." And she went down there. She uh, met with uh, Al Snow. She Al met Snow, with yeah. Az. Um, she met Bruce Pritchard, um, wow. and Tommy Dreamer, and, um, you know, long story short, you know, they were like, oh, you're, you're, you're too muscular, um, you know, you don't exactly look, you know, that feminine enough, uh, why don't you come back, you know, when you've lost a little bit of muscle mass, that's basically what they told Are you kidding me? Her. And this is, this is what, I mean, this is China, China. so what is China? Is she like the fucking Sasquatch of, of, of their... The rest of the world. I mean, oh. how, how do you say that to someone? And then they have China as like the, the leading lady that looks like you know Hulk Hogan's twin with long hair. Yeah, yeah. Black long hair and and yeah. black. Well, maybe. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I don't know. I don't know what's up with WWE. Uh, it, 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 and it's funny that that you know that we're talking about this because it's like the next year that they did the diva contest again. You know, she actually trimmed up. She she lost the muscle mass and. You know, she started having hips and all that going on, and you know it wasn't sloppy, but it was nice. And she went back, and you know they're like, "Nah, you're, you know, yeah, yeah, we remember you, yeah." yeah. Well, nah, nah, we're not quite, we're not quite, you know. And she just said, "You know what? Forget this. These guys are just wasting my time." Now you fast forward, and they want uh, number two pencil-looking chicks that. Uh, don't know diddly squat about an arm bar and and all that other no, stuff. No, and fuck you know exactly in those, in those fake ass breasts where the nipples are both pointing west and east, and it's like that's what they want. They want yeah. they want they want that, and I think to me that it's, it's kind of upsetting in a way because they're almost classifying as they want dolls. They want like mm-hmm. you know make believe dolls. So to mm-hmm. and I don't for me when I watch that now I don't even fully I don't even fully believe it anymore. It's almost like you know you're taking a concept of something where it's a real sport. It's a lot of fun to, to be involved in. It's it's great for uh, for entertainment. It's great for political purposes. It's great for, you know, money. But when you look at what they're trying to do and what they're trying to gear towards, I don't really think they're they're listening to their fans or they're, they're, they're focusing on, I don't know, I just don't feel like they're focusing more on, on the fan aspect of it and, and, and reality. You know, it's like when you had those tough enough and you had this, 
it's supposedly a reality show. You know, placate as much as possible. Try to be as most reality. You know, and, and when you're into the wrestling federation, you have, that's what it is. You know, you look at the women, those are the women that you want to say, wow, I'd like to be like, you know, the China's thing, not as, you know, that, that's crazy big. I don't know about, I will never worry, but hypothetically, yeah. if you're doing it, not, not that you are China, but you know, you just look like you are. And I, I just feel like, you know, it's tough to have a role model for the, the, the young audience that may look up to the dealers, you know, thinking about it like that. And it's just, it, it's just, I don't know, it just, it blows my mind how, how they are selecting the selective process nowadays. And it's tough. It, is. it just seems like it's more politics than anything nowadays. And that's, that's disgusting. <laughs> I, I, and now how much have you been following with, with the product as of late? Um, I, I have to honestly say I have not been following it as closely. I do. I did watch um, a little bit of the TWA. With Hulk. I, I love Hulk Hogan. I mean, I have to say he, so people may hate on him, but he's a brand that's been around forever and is still branding, you know, to this day. So, you know, you can't hate on a person for being a good businessman. And um, I will have to say, like, watching Sting, and that was another one, you know, from, like, the days of wrestling that I enjoyed watching Sting. I, I... That little discussion that they had between each other on the stage was just, it was impressive to me that when, I actually felt like Sting took his balls and put it right in Hogan's mouth and said, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he uh, he chewed him out pretty good there. Yeah, he's he chewed singing, him out. Hey, uh, he's like, shut up, shut up, shut up, just like that. And it just, it just went to show, you know, it's like, you know, I, I don't know if it, you know, it's for, here we go again. I think it's, I think it's a setup for something that's going to come between the two. You know, Hulk Hogan, he needs a bionic knee first before I think he gets back into wrestling. Although the surgeries he's had on that knee, but um, I think it's I think it's an interesting call. You know, I think something's going to transpose between those two in the future. But I haven't been following it extremely close. Um, you know, bits every little bits here and there, um, more so than anything. And, don't hate, hate on me, fans. But, no, know, no, no, no. What, what, what do you it. think it is that made you kind of drift away from it? Because, you know, that, that does happen for a lot of folks. There's, you know, and for some, they look at one particular thing and they say, you know what, it's just not what it used to be like back in the day. And, you know, they venture off. You know, we got those WWF Attitude Era fans. You know, they, they don't like how to how the product ended up becoming, and, you know, they went off into the MMA and the, the UFC and, and, and the boxing. What was the case for you? Well, you know what? I think you just hit something right on the head. When you mention uh, UFC, mm-hmm. if you look at UFC, for, in, for instance, and what do you see? You see two guys just going at it, and it, it, it almost, I hate to say this, and I know wrestlers, you know, will, will drop kick you and pile drive you until in tomorrow, but I feel when people gear towards, you know, straying away from, say, the WWE and W. Uh, WW, you know, when they're straying away from that and going to like UFC, I think it's the reality portion of it. I think when you're taking top-notch guys, like for instance, here we go, it's a perfect example. You take um, The Rock, you take uh, John Cena. The Rock is going to be in there for maybe a couple more years because he's doing movies. You know, because he's doing movies, we got to build, we got to put him into the storyline somewhere because he's going to draw that much more of a bigger fan base for us, which is going to boost our numbers and create more of a credible audience. So, how do we placate the story in this? And it becomes, I think, it becomes for the older generation. It's not so much, I don't know, I don't know if it's so much the bout of watching them wrestle versus the bout to see who's going to get there. Did you guess right? Like a gamble. Did you guess right? I'm going to tune in and watch to see if I guess right. When the younger audience is probably saying, man, this is awesome. I'm going to play my friend the next day. We're going to do some pile drivers in the backyard and this. And the older folks are saying, it's not so much, you know, the wrestling and what they're doing in the ring. It's who's going to get there. So it becomes a, it becomes a gamble. Like, are you taking best to see if John Cena's going to be in it? Are you taking best to see if, uh, if, if John Cena's going to wrestle Hulk Hogan at some point? You know, you never know. It's like... You kind of watch. It's almost like watching the. I hate to say it. The fucking fox park. It's like, it's like yeah, but what are the numbers? It's like what are the fucking numbers? What are your numbers? Who's going to be in it next? And that's how we see it as an older person. So when that younger generation that's getting a little older kind of sees a little bit more of the the reality in in the wrestling, they gear towards ultimate fighting because that's like blood sport. You know, you have you can get it knocked the fuck out right right in front of your face, right in the mare, and it just. 
if they're at, they're acting, then they're UFC, then they're fucking brilliant actors because they are not the hung out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Uh, and I mean, I, I think those fans that ventured off into that, you know, there's just those little bright moments. And you just touched on it where you get a guy like Dwayne the Rock Johnson. He he comes back. He does a couple of matches for him for a little bit. You take a former UFC guy like Brock Lesnar. He comes back for a little bit. Uh, yeah. Now you know, now we're hearing the rumblings that Ken Shamrock um, decorated Holy UFC shit. fighter. Yeah, we're hearing rumblings that he's interested in going back to the WWE for one last hoorah. It's like those those, those little traces of what made that company great in the past you know, is kind of what's having that uh, fan that's ventured off into the boxing and the MMA uh, primarily to come back and check out the product the second go round. But, you know, uh, as it relates to everything, you can't please everybody because as nice as it is to see all those old guys come back, you got, you know, that that younger generation that's saying, look, I don't want to see all these old guys uh, coming in. Um, I, I want to see just the new talent. You even have folks that have been watching the product for however long sit up and say, I don't want to see these old heads come back. I want to see the, the, the new blood. You know, why are all these old people coming back? The old people are coming back because they were a draw, and they're still a draw for their respected time. But, uh, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, you think about it. Like, think about this. Remember the movie Rocky? Yo, we I, love it. Love it. Rocky. Everybody loves Rocky, right? I, I, I mean, that's, like, that's just that's one of my favorite movies of Sylvester Stallone. And, you know, he had Rocky one. I mean, he rocked it out to Rocky four when Drago was in effect. And I was like, that, even that was fucking awesome. But when you when you come back at a certain age trying to placate the same role as you did way back then, it doesn't look necessarily right and it doesn't look believable. You know, it's almost, it's tough to say, okay, you're going to get back and you need to tell me after like, like, you know, all these years, you're going to step into a ring with a 22-year-old and you're going to have the same moves and uh, mobility that you had back then? Of course not, you know. So it's not going to be as believable. So now you're taking a sport that, you know, placated on the believability factor back in those days. Like, you know, this is, it's, it's, it's wrestling. It's a, real, it's a real fucking sport. So let's get in that ring and let's show them what we can do. There might be some freak accidents. You know, you don't want to kill somebody in the ring because that's, you know, but that's the whole, that's the whole focus is you got to be tough enough to survive in, in, in the ring, you know, and that's what wrestling is about. But when you take these old cats coming back in and they're going to, you know, stand up against some of the younger cats in, a, in a, a match, how does that play? You know, how do you really play that off when in reality that could, that could, I could it, picture your grandfather going into the ring with one of you know, coming <laughs> into the ring, like John Cena. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, how is that going <laughs> to how is that going to fly? How do you, how do you pitch that to like believability levels of the whole? This is wrestling. This is a real fucking sport. You know, you have you have basketball, you have hockey, you have you have uh, tennis. Or, you know, it's a weak sport. Well, not really. It's a, it's a great sport as well. You have tennis, but you have these bouts where it's 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 like going back into the Roman days when you're in there and you're fighting. You know what I'm saying? Like this is mm-hmm. a battle to the end, and that's kind of what sports is supposed to be about. But then. You have something where you're taking this sport of wrestling, and it is a real sport. But of course, you're you're amplifying it to cater to to the world. So you have to have to put in some storylines. You have to put in some uh, some some twists, some turns. And how do you build? How do you build it off of this? And how do you build it off of that? How do we take it to the next level? So it becomes it's a little tougher when you start putting grandpas in with you know young folks and saying, I'm going to step into the ring one, one last time with you, brother, you know, and you've had 32 knee surgeries on your left knee and you're already limping in the stage, but you want to prove that you, you, you can do it. And that's great. I think that's wonderful for our fans that are, like, of, of a little bit older and that kind of like uh, the Hulk Hogan's. I mean, I, I do. I have to say I do like him. I didn't like when he, he went from good to bad and, and it just you could see the whole story just falling apart and he went back mm-hmm. to good because probably they probably realized that, 
it wasn't making him enough money for him being bad, and he wasn't throwing enough Hulkamaniacs, you know, that's, you know, bodybuilding kits anymore. So they had to put him back to being good. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. draw, mm-hmm. I draw a bigger crowd. So it's, mm-hmm. it's it's how you play the story, and I think it just becomes it becomes uh, a fairy tale almost in certain aspects of it. If you're not, you know, if you're a fan of old and you see how this is placating and you're bringing back the old folks, well, it's it's, it's tough, you know. And, it's it's tough. You know, even like the Ric Flairs, you know, I, I think he was he was always the over the top animated guy. You know, always and, and I condolences to his family for losing his son, you know, yeah, you know, you know twenty five years old. Which, yeah, that that, that was huge. huge. Yeah. I, yeah, I was um I was I was with my girlfriend uh yesterday and uh, we had we had just got done uh going to uh Red Robin and I come in and I, at this point I had a couple of drinks so I I was ready to crash for the night and I get in front of the computer and I'm just checking mail and uh, I hear from one of my friends dude did you hear uh Rick Flair's kid died I said huh and uh, like, he's like, yeah, it was Reed Flair. I'm like, Reed? I'm like, no. He's like, yeah, Reed died, man. He was found uh, in a hotel uh, at the Marriott down in, uh, uh, what's that, uh, I think, uh, North Carolina. Okay, and, yeah. Uh, they, they said there was no foul play, uh, autopsies underway and all that. And it, it was so eerie because I, uh, he, Rick Flair was actually supposed to come. Uh, over here to the area in uh, Hagerstown, Maryland, for a uh, big time wrestling event, and he was supposed to do a uh, autograph signing. And uh, his son, uh, I'm hearing his son was supposed to, you know, be tagging along with him for the event. And uh, wow. you know, some of the people, you know, some people had the audacity to say, "Oh, I, I wonder if uh, Rick Flair is going to be showing up." It's like, no, you dipshit. Of course he's not going to show up. <laughs> his fucking son he's died. The hell you mean is he going to show up? You know, it's like uh, it's like well, look, you guys have those, those. Those are the ones that just don't. Yeah, it's not clicking. Those kind of folks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not clicking. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, but no. yeah, definitely, our our hearts and condolences uh, uh, go out uh, to Ric Flair and uh, his family. And the, the timing, it just, it just sucks. I mean, to go into the Easter holiday, you know, and you lost a loved one, oh, young yeah. at that, you know, um, checkered past. Just, Checkered pass, he yeah. has. I'm hoping, I'm keeping my fingers crossed, I'm praying that uh, there's no uh, drugs uh, in his system when they get ready to uh Yeah, I was going to say that. Like, I, think, I think one of the scariest things, it's not, I think the drug of choice of old used to be um, back in the day. Like, it was like the, the coke heads and, you know, the ecstasy takers and yada, yada. I think today's, it tends to gear towards the prescription drugs, like, ones that keep you with depression pills or this. And what they do is they get them um, they get them black market or because of who they are, they have these doctors that tend to, for a certain amount of money, write these prescriptions for them and they get them and they don't read the, the factors behind them, which, okay, you have, anyone can take, you know, a, a Xanax and say, oh, my God, I need to calm down, but they don't read that if you mix Xanax with alcohol that it could stop your heart instantly. You know, mm-hmm. if you have a drink and you, but you might be so choice to taking it that you don't think about it. You know, and then when you say, okay, I'm gonna have a couple hours later, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have a drink before I actually go hang out with my friends. You know, first, you know, to get something from the mini bar, take it and boom. Next thing you know, your heart stops and you're instantly dead because you're, you're now you're messing with prescription medication. So yeah. you know, I just I don't know. Hopefully, it's not. You know, that's the case. But it, it didn't seem like he had any kind of complications or problems. And if there wasn't any foreplay, then what else could it be? Exactly, exactly. Um, let's lighten up the mood a little bit. I, I want to switch yeah. back. Okay. I want to switch back <laughs> to your music. I want to switch back wow. to your music. Um, tell me, um, what do you think it is about music today? Because you know, one of the things that I had liked the most that I was picking up from uh, what I heard of your band, you know, you're, you know, you 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 could now you and you could flirt with it very well. You could go the pop route. Because that's what's trending now. You got the sigh, you you got all those little Biebers and all those other little knuckleheads running around. Uh, you know, I, I can't stand. You know, I can't stand that crap. By the way, but you got all these little knuckleheads that they they go for 
they don't care about the melody. They 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 it's that little hook and you know the 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 little you know little. They don't even care about the beats. It's just the little hook, the little sugar coating. You know, what do you think it is that has metal rock music not take its its dominance as it once did uh, back in the day? Because you know some people they'll they'll point this out. They'll say, you know, music died when we lost guys like Alice in Chains, Lane Stolee, uh, when we lost Kurt Cobain of Nirvana, when we lost guys like NXS. You know, a, a lot of folks say, you know, the, the the hard rock era died once those guys had left. What, what's your take on, on why pop music has just been so dominant in like the past decade to the point now the billboards has been reformatted to make a guy like Psy dominate across every single genre. Yeah, well, <clears throat> I have to say a couple things in, in the sense of, of, of that. I think um, today's industry, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's quite clear that pop music is, is in the eyes and has the, probably the biggest marketability from product placement to endorsement to, you know, whatever have you been, it, it falls with the generation of, of kids. And one of the main things I'm noticing is I, when iTunes came into play, um, the ones that tend to buy, I have to say, a majority of the music are these kids that are into pop. So they have, you know, an iTunes account. They don't need mommy and daddy's credit card anymore because it's an account they just have to sign in and download. Okay, I like this pop song. I like this pop song. Pop, pop, pop. You do get some rock followers, but there's all kinds of advertising geared towards the pop world because it seems that the pop industry has so much more to offer those labels, which are dying. You know, dying labels. To, in today's world, I think the labels are finding ways to stay alive because they're dying, and they're dying because you have, you know, folks say like myself or that are really, you know, you can do. If you go to school for this. You can take, you know, some courses in it and, and build a studio at home and make a, a great demo that you can sell yourself because now you have what the labels have, which is the capabilities of drawing an audience through uh, avenues that weren't geared for us back in the day that were only controlled by these labels. And so having this, this pop music facade and these labels, I think pop is what's keeping them alive. You know, rock is what's keeping a nice, nice chunk of their fan base, but the biggest focus for these labels are what's now. Forget tomorrow because you may not be tomorrow. So we're already looking for the next tomorrow. We want what you, this is what you're doing now. And when you think of like Nirvana, and I'm, I'm a huge, you know, Nirvana fan, and even Pearl Jam, like the earlier Pearl Jam, and they were just kind of like raw before the labels got a hold of them. And there was that whole, if you remember, uh, there was that whole like uh, battle, not really battle, but it was like, you know, Kurt Cobain really didn't, didn't live for Pearl Jam, you know, I'd be better in Pearl Jam because of the fact that he thought they were just too commercializing themselves and going the route of what the man, and, and that sense, the labels wanted to conform them to because of what's here now, and they were just kind of, they were just kind of trying to make the music that they felt they wanted to make um, in Nirvana. And so it became, you know, this, this, this battle between creativity, you know, and who's, uh, the creative market, and I think a lot of people in the rock industry don't want to conform to what the labels are trying to say. And so in that sense, it becomes, okay, well, if you don't want to conform to what we're saying, then good luck. So we're going to push the pop music, and we're going to drown the rockers out. Because pop is like, you're right, it's, it's four chord prog progression, and I can take any, any pop four chord progression. <laughs> oh, sorry, that's my guard dog. <laughs> it's all right, sorry. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Quiet. I'm on the air, ladies. <laughs> um, I think I think they take any uh, possibility, uh, and, and they're saying, you know what, you don't want to conform to what we're doing. This is what I'm talking as a label. Then fine, we're going to take the pop, and pop is where it's at because we can get these young these young kids that like this stuff, put a four chord progression, put lyrics in front of them that may, they may not even they may not have even written, you know, and say, look, they have a look, we'll market them. This is what we'll do, you know, and, and it becomes what's mainstream and what's focused and, and even like you were saying, the whole genres now have become twisted. There's a whole different category for everything. It's like yeah. Ozzy Osbourne, you know, and, and all those guys back in the day, they were metal. But now today they're classified as hard rock. It's not even metal anymore. It's like they're hard rock. They're not even metal. It's like that's not you know, kids today are hear metal I'm like that's not fucking metal. 
You know, it's like yeah. they look at Metallica. They look at Metallica even. They're like, that's not fucking metal. That's like no, hard yeah, rock. That's, that's hard rock, yeah. It, exactly. So it yeah. becomes like this whole generation of, of transformation, and it's tough. I mean, for rock bands, too, it's just what, what's extremely tough about it is you're not a pop group, a pop band. Um, I, I feel it, it's a different personality. I feel the pop groups go into these classes to be trained on how to work with the public. And the rockers are like, you know what? Here we are, you know, this is who we are. And, you know, it's a diamond dozen that rock bands stay together. And I was talking I was talking to my boyfriend the other day about this. I was like, can we really name a rock band that's, you know, been together since the beginning? Beginning. And it's, it's very tough to even call out a few. I mean, I think Pearl Jam um, has been together since the beginning when, you know, they hired, um, when Vetter came into play, they've been the same group since the beginning. So that was like one. And then I think U2... You like too. another one. It was like right. So it's like you have like you know a few bands in between that have stuck together throughout the new. You have um, I also believe it was like uh, ACDC when the first singer died. You had uh, yeah, but the, the, you have I think they've been together for like forever. I'm not necessarily sure, but you can't find bands that have been together forever. And I think because uh-huh. with them too, they don't conform to the labels, and it's just it's so different today. I mean, it's not even about. It's not now. It's not about um, the, the the popular. You know, it's about live show with the rock bands. And what you're really going to do is by getting out. You have to prove yourself. In the pop world, there's nothing to prove. I think in the pop world, it's almost like you have full core possessions. In the rock world, you still mm-hmm. have rockers that are like, you know what? You're not supposed to buy your music. You got to prove to us. You got to come to one of your shows and see how you guys are are putting it down, and then you you'll have this ravaged fan base. But it's we don't have the labels behind. Uh, so much like uh, like the pop the pop music because we don't conform to necessarily what they want us to do and if we do then it becomes tougher to sell because you know I, I don't know it's it's, it's a me, it's a tough line. Let me pick your brain on something because I, I I think just to follow up on what you said because you you brought up very a very valid point. You know there used to be a time you you know this very well. There used to be a time where when it comes to, you know, rock musicians, you know, metal, whatever, just, you know, just put it all, all together. It used to be a time where you have a band, they go, okay, you know what, let's put out an LP, let's let's do it. And I put like 11, 12 tracks, let's do it. And, you know, it does well, they go out on tour, and, you know, you know they're making a little bit of money, every, everything's good, back to the studio, they do it again, do another LP. Nowadays, especially like bands like Smash and Pumpkins, they are finding it hard and, and, and harder to put out a whole length album of great kick ass material. I mean you, you take the uh last album they did, I think it was um I think it was Zyges. Uh, I, I can't yeah. remember off off the hand. Uh, that that was a phenomenal album, but it's like you see them on tour and they're playing like four or five great kick ass songs from the album and the crowd isn't into it, but then you turn out, you, you turn on uh, "Bully with Butterfly Wings," you know, and everybody starts bobbing their heads to it. <laughs> it's like now it looks like the strategy is okay. Let's just spoon feed them a little bit. Uh, let's just okay. you know go out there with two, three songs. Let's make it an EP. Is that the? Because I noticed when I was checking out your music, you have a lot of EPs. Is that the route you're kind of going? You're trying to get a feel. On how the industry is, or or this, or is this your way of building up hype? Because I know that's another way that some artists, you know, like to look at releasing singles. Is is they want to just put a little tease out there before an actual LP comes out? Right. I think. Well, it's also I'm independent, so it becomes also a sense of affordability. Mm-hmm. Um, you can't necessarily, you know, I I can't go into studios, you know, and, and just crank out professionally well done, high top producer, you know, uh, LPs whenever I want. You know, so you also want to make sure you play things that, it's like anything. Uh, in, in the rock world, it's writing. You can write, but the guys, we kind of just write. We feel something, we write it, we get in there, we rehearse it, and we want to add it to our set and play it, you know, because we want to see crowd reactions. That's how we, that's how, that's how it should be. Like, you know, you're hearing this music, and I, I write from emotion, you know, and the guys do as well. And so it's like when we sit there and we're writing, and, and emotions are starting to come out through my material, that's what I'm gearing myself towards. And so I, I also want to see how 
the reaction goes with, with the audience. You know, I'm out there, I'm, I'm going to play it. You know, even if they don't like some of the songs, they don't like some of the songs. I'm not, I can't please, as like we were saying earlier, you can't please everyone. Right. So in the sense that I'm writing, if I'm writing for people, I'm going to get bored. If I'm writing for the people out there, then I'll get bored and I'll get upset because it may even come across believable where they might turn the channel the next day. But if I'm writing for, for, for myself and I'm writing for the sense that I know I have a story and I, I like to share that with, with the folks out there, then that's an, another side. And I think what's gearing today, you're right, is the EPs is because what's tough in today's world is you have to prove yourself. You've got to get out there and you've got to play these songs. And I think having an EP for an independent person is, is wonderful. You get the bite. You get the nibble off of an EP. And then if, say, something transposes, if someone hears your music and that's of a label that says, we like your sound, we like the direction you're doing, which is, which is, I think, what labels, you know, especially those independent labels that are, like, branches off of, like, you know, BMI, BMG and, and, and Sony and all those guys. is like branches. You know, you have Roadrunner Records, you know, and you have uh, all these, up. like, sub wind up these sublet yeah. which is exactly which is right here in the city you have these sublet labels but what they're doing is it's tougher today because of the fact that everyone thinks they're a rock star everyone thinks they're this this phenomenal musician because they have capabilities of buying uh you know five hundred dollar piece of virtual equipment and they become this musician and now you have to lead through all the talent so it becomes a competition. That's even on a grander scale than it used to be back in the day where, like Nirvana, you have, you have to go out live to see them. You can't. You know, they're playing from real instruments. They're not, like, putting together four tracks off of a keyboard playing a drum synth pad, you know, and this is my song. You know, here it is right here, like Pop World. Pop World can throw out all kinds of mixes because everything, to my, in my opinion, is done synthetically. There's no, yeah. there's no hatred on that, but it's all synthetic. So for yeah. us, it's a little different because... You know, we have to get out there. We have to, you know, bring our instruments into the studio. We have to play from live instruments if you want to create that sound. And I think that's what we feel, uh, what rock musicians and rock fans feel. Is they want to feel that music. They want to, like, they want to they want to enjoy what you're enjoying up there. And I just think it's a whole different world today when it comes when it comes to that. So. Hmm. To let your fans know, because I know we got some of your listeners, because we definitely made sure we put the word out there, and uh, this episode is featured uh, on the staff section for uh, Blog Talk, uh, at least for this weekend, I That's believe. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, let, let, let them know, uh, as far as uh, a forthcoming LP or any new material, let them know the 411. Yes, yeah, so my uh, my side band, official fan band, we actually have a four-song demo, um, and you can check that out on Facebook as well. It's a... Uh, Facebook.com forward slash official fans and S A N Z E N D, which is an awesome name, by the way, um, and awesome meaning. If you go look at the symbol of how we did that, there's a lot of meaning behind that. Um, and fans end uh, means without end. And the symbol that's kind of written into our name is almost like the infinity symbol. So it's a lot of, you know, when we, the theme music that we're, we're gearing towards too has this like epic kind of vibe and it has a lot of meaning, a lot of emotion, a lot of things in there. So, um, we do have uh, four songs there, but we have tons of arsenal that we're working on. Uh, we have another show coming up here uh, uh, this Tuesday um, in the city. We're kicking off the East Village Music Festival uh, here in New York City, and we're playing in a place called Alphabet Lounge. And if you go onto that Facebook page, Official Sands In, you'll see the uh, flyer to that. So we're looking forward to kicking that off. And, man, I can just tell you, like, it's just it's a, it's a great feeling, um, you know, being able to create the way we create. And, you know, we feel if we just keep doing the route that we're doing and, and focusing that someone of caliber will recognize that and say, you know what, these guys are different. They they mean business. They know, and I mean, come on, a black fucking chick that can rock the fuck out like me. <laughs> Better sign me quick. Look, there's fun. only, <laughs> look, yeah, look, look, no, no bullshit. There's only one other woman that I can think of that's black that can throw it down, and, and you know, I look at her as, as a great testament. And uh, my uh, my uh, brother-in-law, um, he actually um, had um, seen uh, her in concert a few times, as well as my uh, pretend brother. Um, I'm trying to think of her name, Jada Pickett-Smith. Oh, uh, yeah, that's it's interesting you say that. Like, I heard 
she was really like, gosh, that was, it was really, really, really came out hard when she came out with that album. And I was very, I was shocked and pleasantly surprised. Yeah. Couldn't believe it. You know, when yeah. I heard that, I was like, wow, they're impressive. And going back even further, it was like, the other one was, uh, which is in the pop realm, but she performed tons of rock and had the look and had the voice that could just sing with anyone with Tina Turner. Yeah, it all and started with her. Was, yeah. It all started with her, you know, and then she was actually, the funny thing was, because she went that route, you know, people were just hating on her left and right. Like, are you kidding me? You're not black, you're black, you're black. You know what I mean? It was just kind of like, she was breaking barriers, you know, for for all of us and and I just I look at it like this is what I love to do, and there is no sign that says you have to be a certain race, you have to be a certain creed, you have to be a certain whatever to 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 do what you love to do. And believe me, there is so many people in this world you can touch so many people by just staying true to who you are. So mm-hmm. and always staying positive and uh, never giving up. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's Let's... okay. You just you can't never give no. up. Never, never, no. Let let them know the uh, the links one more time and, and your upcoming shows. And we're actually providing some of the links uh, in the chat room right now. And for those of you that might have missed this interview, if you listen on the downloads, we also provided links in the episode description. But, but hook them up with the links one more time. You got it. You guys can check out my website, which is pretty kick ass at uh, www dot tanadra. Um, we're we're gonna get we're gonna get Lee to say this right. Tanadra. Tanadra. <laughs> Right, T A N A D R A dot com. Um, like you said, I saw a couple links that are on, it's on their site. You can check that out. Um, all my social networking links are on that website, but you know I have Twitter um, at Tanadra. Um, we also have uh, the Facebook, which is uh, Tanadra Official, um, and www dot facebook dot com forward slash official sans S A N Z and uh, and you can check out that some of our newer stuff from up on my side band, Sam saying that uh, Johan is the drummer and uh, Joe is the guitarist and man, do we have such a connection. So yeah, I mean, it's going to be exciting stuff. We're playing this Tuesday in Manhattan. If you're going to be out, come out, have a couple of drinks with us. It's going to get live. I'm going to really throw down some new stuff. Oh, and we're going to be putting, uh, we added into our, you know, I love little Led Zeppelin, so why not challenge my vocals and I'm going to be performing the Immigrant Song, you know, as our cover. So there's the surprise. Yeah, Ooh. so I'm going to be ripping that apart and, you know, holding it down. So we had good, I did it one time before, and, man, it was just like the people that were there just kind of looked, and I just knew I had them. I was like, damn, gotcha. Wow. <laughs> Oh, please tell me you'll be recording. I would like to hear that live version. That would be awesome. Yes, yes. We will hopefully uh, get our, our friend, which is a great camera person out there, to record that set for us and some stuff. So, yeah, we're starting to build our repertoire for the summer. So, yeah, please come by, stop by, you know, spread the love about us and like us on Facebook and, you know, follow me on Twitter and all those different avenues. And I am very, very much a people person, so I will write back. And say hi, you know, we can chat it up the whole nine yards. Well, look, uh, you know, you definitely want a fan uh, in me over here, and I'm pretty sure you, you, you definitely won uh, a lot of fans uh, over uh, today. And I definitely can't stress it enough. And I know good music when I hear it, folks. And uh, if you en- had enjoyed the uh, track we played earlier uh, from Tanadra, which was called Release You, then uh, you definitely want to make sure you check out all the other material. And uh, we have the links provided in the chat room right now. It's also in the uh, episode description. And uh, Tanya, from the bottom of my heart, I definitely appreciate you uh, taking the time out to do this interview. And, uh, hey, any time you want to come on back, you're more than welcome to do so, even if it's just to come on back and just say a, a quick hello. Uh, I know we'll be in contact as we exchange uh, Twitter handles and uh, Facebook and all that. But uh, any time you want to come on back, you're more than welcome, as uh, we, we have longtime guests that, that just love to just keep on popping up. So uh, any time you want to do something, just, yeah, just come on back. Sure, thank you. So, I mean, I appreciate it. Thank you for the feature. It is just, it's it's an honor to actually talk with you. You have a phenomenal show. Um, the wrestling industry should, should freaking just hire you directly because you, you, you give the information that needs to be given and what needs to be said. And I appreciate that. And, and folks that are listening, I would really appreciate it if you even stop by my store. We have a district lines dot com forward slash Tanadra store. I have some cool, cool ass t-shirts there, some stickers. 
um, some packages, and all that you purchased helps me to put together my next album. Um, so I'd appreciate that. You want to hear some good rocking tunes? Any little bit goes a long way. So download all, all the songs you've heard or will hear um, on iTunes. You get a free download of my latest release right now, which is Not Alone, which is um, the newest, uh, just a couple months ago, I released that, actually. I'm um, giving it away as a free download, so you can get that right off of the Facebook page. Or well, my Reverb Nation, let me just mention one more, www.reverbnation dot com forward slash Sinatra and all those links again are on my website. I do write blogs, so sign up to my website. It's free. You get a free download just for signing up. Nice acoustic version so you can hear a little mellow side and you can do a little romantic over a glass of wine. And yeah, stop by the store, pick up some T shirts if you like for friends, family. I would appreciate the support because all those proceeds help to go towards my next album. You know, keeping the independent independent ha independent music wise. Um and you know I don't have a label. I'm doing all my own, so all the support I need would be greatly appreciated. Support the artist. That's right. Love the music. Support the artist. Uh, you piracy people, same thing. Uh, you love the music. You love the artist. Support them. Yes, hands down. Uh, Tanya, thank you so much for this. And I know I'll definitely be touching bases with you uh, after we get off the air. I'll uh, sing you a uh, MP3 version of this interview so you can uh, put it up on the website and everything. For sure, and I'll, if you will talk afterwards, I definitely want to send you uh, a signed copy of a CD, some posters, some stickers, and all that fun stuff. Just oh, that would be phenomenal. Yeah, 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 let's do that, yeah. All right, well, look, you enjoy the rest of the uh, the Easter holiday, and uh, once you. again, I thank you so much for uh, doing this interview. Totally kicked ass of all the interviews I've done uh, this past year. This, this was definitely uh, the most fun I've had. Oh, thank you. Um, you got me blushing. That's hard to do because I'm black. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, one and only Taya Medina of Tanandra. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Lee. Have Bye a now. great Easter weekend. Bye-bye. You too. Bye. For news you can use, like us on Facebook during this commercial break at Infinity One Productions. All right. So without any further ado, and I love how this show has been flowing today, man. Um, it, it's nice to kind of really just go more in depth about the whole entertainment talk uh, than the wrestling. Uh feels very revigorating. Let's bring in the beautiful and the lovely co-producer, Tammy. Has not been with us uh, for a good minute. I think the last time we did a collaboration, Tammy, was, uh, God, when was it? It's been a while. It's been a while. At least a couple of two, three months, if not more. Yeah, I think the last collaboration we did was uh, on air, that is. Uh, I mean, because we work behind the scenes together, but I, I think the last time we uh, we did a show together was, uh, God, it had something to do with... Uh, oh, Probably man. the uh, psychologist right after the shooting in, uh, in um, near New York. I'm sorry, uh, I can't think of the the shooting that happened right yeah, after, we had Dr. Right Bart after Rossi. Christmas. Yeah, yeah, we had Dr. Bart Rossi. That one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, I think that was our last collaboration, yeah. Because I, I get asked all the time, uh, and it's usually by our boy Philip. He's like, where's Tammy? What's going on with Tammy? And, and you know, for those of you that, that don't know, and or, you know, you may be new listeners, and you're like, oh, yeah, who is Tammy here? Well, you know, Tammy, uh, she's our co-producer, and uh, a lot of you may be wondering, well, what what's some of her responsibilities? Well, and the large part, uh, because she's, she's actually my partner in crime, along with a few other people, but uh, she's one of a few people that helps keep the RCWR show uh, on the air. Um, as you know, it, it, it's not cheap uh, to to be doing this, and you know we wouldn't be doing this if we didn't love what we were doing. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, unfortunately, it does come down to money. And you know, me, Tammy, a couple other people, you know, we all make it possible to be able to keep doing this show for you guys. And any special little contests uh, that we're able to come up with, uh, Tammy usually kicks back, and you know, she's crunching the numbers. She's trying to think about how much it's, you know, going to cost to uh, to execute it. Uh, she's the person behind the fact that uh, now we got RCWR shirts uh, that's going to be forthcoming. 
Uh, you know, she does a, a lot of stuff behind the scenes, and she even helps out with remixing uh, sometimes of certain episodes. So uh, that's the role of, of our co-producer over here as uh, she helps out with the show. So now you know, and knowing is half the battle. Um, <laughs> G.I. Joe, <laughs> which is out in theaters right now. So, um, <laughs> nice little plug. Nice yeah, yeah there. It's very, very <laughs> intricate plug there. <laughs> uh, so, okay, let's talk about this new Justin Timberlake CD, um, the 2020 experience. I'm not going to front you guys. I'm not really that hardcore into Justin Timberlake. Do I have his albums? Yes, I just haven't gotten around to listening to them. Uh, you know, no, no bullshit. I've listened to certain tracks. Uh, I, I thought they were pretty good. I, I like to rock your body, and, you know, it shows how old I am. But um, I know, Tammy, uh, I was telling you the other week, I said, man, Justin Timberlake, he's got this really cool kick-ass song that's uh, playing on VH1 Soul, uh, Suit and Tie. And uh, I remember I was kind of grooving my head a little bit, and, and then uh, Jay-Z came in, and I'm like, okay, Jay-Z just kind of took a shit on the song here. Um, <laughs> you, you know, and I love Jay-Z. I got all the Jay-Z's albums. Um, I stay pushing the classic stuff, Reasonable Doubt, uh, Life and Times of Sean Carter. Uh, you know, I, I love Jay-Z, but, man, uh, he, he shit on that track when he came in. I didn't need uh Jay Z on that, but hey, that that's just me, you know, that's that's just my cup of tea. But uh Tammy, okay, so let's talk about this new album. Of course that was uh one of the lead tracks uh from Justin Timberlake's new album, uh that called the Twenty Twenty Experience. Uh give the folks the four one one, uh since they haven't uh for those that might not have checked out the album yet. Well, yeah, absolutely. They actually uh released that album on the fifteenth of March, so but uh, a whole lot of people have actually. As the first week, it went to number one and selling over nine hundred thousand copies in its first week. Damn. So, <laughs> so a few people have checked it out, but uh, I've checked it out a couple of times. Actually, I'm one of those people that have to listen to it a couple of times just to kind of get that feel and that riff. Because if I don't, most of the time it's like, yeah, you know. But I've listened to it a couple of times, and I absolutely feel the same way you do, is that uh, JT was in his groove on, on that song, and then Jay-Z came in, and that was like, uh. Yeah, so. you know, it, it, it's, like, it's, like, it's like he just butchered it, you know. He's like, you know, you got Justin, he's all smooth and everything. He's like, as I got my suit in time. Let me show you a few things. Let me show you a few things. And then you got Jay-Z, come on in. Yo, hova, jigga, be like, yo, jigga, yo, 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 You know, it's like, I, I don't need that, man. <laughs> That's right. You were you kind of weren't in that mode at that point. Absolutely. Uh, but uh, this really has that uh, neo kind of neo soul to it. They're calling it now. Um, I call it a switch between or a combination between techno and throwback. Um, as some of the songs really do have some of that throwback vibe to them. Um, there are some songs that I could definitely leave on the on the album, uh, but there's some songs that I really really like. One of them is is Suit and Tie. That's probably my favorite. Okay. Um, the other couple that I really really like that have stood out to me is Pusher Girl Love Pusher Love Girl. Uh, mm-hmm. That's actually got a nice little beat to it. I actually like, um, and of course Suit and Tie, which is the track number two, but um, it's, it's, there's also a couple other space, uh, Spaceship Coop uh, That girl which is really Really cute It's got that kind of melody soft beat to it um, And I'm Much more easy listening Than Lee is So <laughs> I am somewhat in, More into the pop genre than, than I know you are So depending on what you're into Is, is how well that you will like this album Um <laughs> Uh, like I said, that girl, and then uh, let the groove get in. That was pretty good too, actually. I actually like that one. And mirrors, which is one of the other tracks that was actually released for, uh, prior to the album release, uh, mm-hmm. those two have really gotten the most praise. Um, and actually, I find both those those two very nice, and the ones above that that I mentioned. 
some of the other ones were okay, and I felt that they were more, for me, they were more like fillers. You know, if I was going to get, say I'm going to iTunes now, if I was going to go get, you know, a specific song instead of versus the whole album, those would be the ones I would get. Mm. Now let's um, talk about does. the album. Now let's talk about, the, I'm sorry to cut you off, let's talk about the album overall, you know, like how many tracks are we talking and like okay, you're for getting, that person. You're getting, go ahead. Right. Mm-hmm. You're no, actually uh, getting uh, nine. Uh, you're getting ten tracks. Okay. You're getting ten tracks off the album, mm-hmm. actually. And he's going back to um, Timberlake, and he's producing he produced the album with Timberlake. Also, J Rock. If you guys are familiar with him, uh, he's actually uh, his first name, real first name is Jerome. If you know. <laughs> Um, and then it's also being produced and, and distributed by RCA Records. Um, so, it, and actually, uh, the new pairing is actually J Rock. So, uh, I don't think he was on the last the last pairing, which was um, Future Future Sex uh, Love Song. Um, a tongue twister for you. Huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's talk, about the, let's, some let's talk the, about the album. Let's talk let's, let's talk about the album. I mean like out of like how many tracks? So you said she's got ten tracks. So how many of them are actually good? For me, as a as in my opinion, it's got ten tracks. Probably five to six of them are good, uh, in my opinion, that would I would go ahead and listen to again. Um, or download, you know, to purchase. Um, so I would say as far as, you know, um, there's some that, you know, instantly you're like, okay, I'm snapping my fingers and, and like, oh yeah, that's a good one. Um, then there's, like I said, there's some that, you know, I'm kind of like, okay, bored, next track, next track, you know, um, but overall it definitely has that pop feel and, and I've heard some rumblings of some other people who basically feel that there might be a little bit of a throwback to, uh, in sync, a little bit. You know, you got some back background, kind of like it would be with In Sync, you know, back then. But um, it's kind of half and half, you know. Um, but it's actually really doing very, quite well as far as the album goes. So, is this album a buy or just cherry pick certain tracks? Um, for me. Personally, I would cherry pick tracks. Okay. Because see, the, you have some people, you know, and I know actually you're one of them who mm-hmm. like the whole experience of the album. Right. I, on the other hand, if I like the track, then that's what I want to hear. Mm-hmm. It, and and actually, that's how my iPod is set up. If right. I actually like the track, then I'm going to get that, and that's what I want. Mm-hmm. Um. So I mean, if you're that person who really likes the whole album experience, absolutely buy it. Um, it, you know, it's it's definitely over half as far as something that you'll you'll like and get into, no no doubt. Um, but for me, who is somewhat of that person who I'm going to cherry pick those certain tracks, and that's what I want. Um, but an overall listen, yeah, absolutely. I I've, I've listened to it a few times, and 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 would buy it um, as far as if I was that type of okay, I want the whole album. Let's and, talk and, about oh, and, and a bonus, actually, especially mm-hmm. where I was telling you about the throwback. <laughs> the actual CD is like a um, an old vinyl record, which I think is too cool. I, I guess that just, you know, tells you how old I am. But <laughs> Oh, as far as the design and layout yep, and all that? Yeah, the design and the layout of the actual CD looks exactly like an old vinyl record that you, you know, if, depending on how old you are, you know exactly what that is. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, I mean that's the nice, nice concept. Okay, but all right now let's let's talk about the pairing of Justin and uh, Timberlake. I mean, you know, these guys they've been like peanut butter and jelly for a long time now. You know, are, are you know because uh, I know you, you you're familiar with Justin's uh, catalog. You know, are we mm-hmm. ready to see Justin kind of depart from Timberlake and, you know, go on to bigger and, and better things? Because I, I just kind of feel like this guy's so much more capable than, you know, the little bit that I heard. I just kind of feel like it's getting a little bit played out with Timberlake. Are, are we kind of getting the vibe now from this album mm-hmm. that it's time for him to move on to another producer or you don't think it's stale just yet? 
Well, that just depends on preference versus market, kind of like what um, Tanya had said, you know, yeah. what's in right now and mm-hmm. what's going to sell. Mm-hmm. Um, so at this point, they're actually kind of gearing towards the market, not mm-hmm. quite, you know, what pe- it's more like what people are into right now and what's going to sell right. versus maybe what people really, really want to see as different and new. Well, um, let me, well, let me. okay, that's fair enough. Let me rephrase it. Is the combination of Justin Timberlake and 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 Timberland, you know, is it a continued success with this latest collaboration, you know, or, or are you kind of picking up a sign that you know it, Justin could be getting ready to move on to other things? Well, I definitely will have to tell you that listening to both the the album that he released prior to his hiatus and this one. There's a lot of the same riffs. There's a lot of the same kind of, you know, you can get that feel of an album. Mm-hmm. And it really is somewhat of the same thing. It's There's there's a little bit of variation, but you still have that same album feel. Just mm-hmm. kind of like uh, Suit and Tie is, a throw, is kind of maybe a, a, a new coat on the same kind of person, which is, you know, suit and tie and then rock your body. Um, same theme, yeah. And yeah. also sexy. Same yeah. beat, yeah. Uh-huh. And, you know, that same beat, that same kind of riff, that same kind of, you know, what you're getting. So it's kind of, okay, the versus, am I going to stay with what works? And this is probably his main decision. Am I going to stay with what works? Or am I going to step out onto new territory, find a new producer, and and see if I can step outside the box? Now, will he have the success with that? That depends on the producer and his willingness to to step out into that unknown. Um, is he exactly. capable of much more? Yeah. 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 yeah no doubt. Yeah, because when I first when I first heard the rumblings that he was getting back with with Timberlake, I was like. Oh God! It's like we're gonna have a rehash of of what they did last time, and and I'm curious out of the, the tracks that you did mention, uh, the, which was I think you said there was about five tracks that you really liked. Any of mm-hmm. them you see being a uh, another video, a, a follow up to Suit and Tie? Well, definitely one of the ones that's really really popular right now is Mirrors. Um, mm-hmm. And I can I can easily see that being a follow up as far as a video. Okay, all right. Yeah, well, I can definitely see that being. Mm-hmm. There you have it. No, no, that's okay. We don't need to go any further than that. I think you feed you. I think you fed the folks uh, uh, just enough for their little Justin fix. That's all you guys gonna get. <laughs> we gonna teach you guys. Just, you know, I think we gave Justin enough damn time. He ain't even paying us. That's all right. We good. All right. So <laughs> bottom line, bottom line from the lovely Tammy. Hey. um... I don't even know your bottom line. Give me the bottom line. Bottom line is, you know, if you, if you are a album person, then I would get the whole album. If you are just those cherry pick the songs I want, go get it, go get it off of iTunes. Then I would just do those particular songs that you like. Um, that's it. Bottom, bottom line. That's it. That's it. That's, that's it. about Pause. it. Really? That, that, pause right there. Scale of one to ten. Overall, what's the album? Seven. All right, there we go. There you go. Seven. All right, I like that. Lovely and the beautiful co-producer Tammy. And uh, I understand you're going to be joining us for the RCWR post show uh, covering the fallout for WrestleMania, right? Correct. Correct. Oh. I will be joining you and Diamond K. That should be freaking awesome. We're going to do a three-man panel. And um, and for mm-hmm. and for you ahead. folks who are sorry, and for your folks who are going to be in the DC area for the Raw event on Monday, please stop and say hi. You know, because as Lee and I will be there um, watching all the festivities um, since it is in the area that we are. So. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be the first time that we're taking the RCWR show on the road, and uh, I'm looking very forward to this. Um, you know, Tammy, we were actually um, contemplating, or at least I was contemplating the idea of uh, going to the Hagerstown, Maryland event 
to uh, get an autograph signing and photo op and maybe try to see if I can get a few Q&A questions with the Nature Boy, Ric Flair. But uh, as we had learned, as uh, me and Tanya were discussing earlier, uh, Ric Flair's uh, son, uh, Reed Flair, uh, found dead uh, at a uh, Marriott hotel uh, that he was staying at, um, unresponsive, whole nine yards. Um, died at the age of 25, very heartbreaking, and the whole wrestling industry has uh, just been giving nothing but uh, their outpouring support mm-hmm. to uh, Flair's family right now. Uh, what, what, what's, what's your take on... Uh, on uh, the, the the passing, I know you're probably not not too familiar with the um, you know with 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 the Flair family, but you know the little that you were able to gather about you know what I went down. What's what's your mm-hmm. thoughts? Well, first of all, our condolences here at the Artist Derby, our show, go out to his family and at this terrible time for everybody. You know, um, it. it Anytime you lose a loved one, especially your child, I mean, there's people here that that have the feeling that no, your child should never go first before you, especially your youngest. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, it, it's kind of it's for me. I, I believe in God, and it's kind of that master plan. You know, when it's your time, it's your time. But you know, some people don't believe that, and believe me, we're not trying to force our beliefs on you. Um, but for me, I, I think it's tragic. I think that, that you know, he was taken definitely too soon. Apparent, you know, apparently he was on and off wrestling in Japan and, and, and really trying to make his, make his own and come into his own, um, trying to follow, follow in his father's footsteps uh, and certainly looked enough like him. Um, but, you know, it, it's just a really tough time for for everybody, you know, in that family and and close to close loved ones and friends, to just to try to take it one day at a time and get through it. That's really all you can do at this point. I would like to believe that he was taken to uh, uh, taken from us too soon. Um, you know, I, I I do kind of want to share those same sentiments, but at the same time, and and God knows, I, I if there was ever a time, I'm hoping that I'm wrong. I'm hoping I'm wrong. Uh, with this statement that I'm about to say, um, he definitely has a checkered history with the law. Um, I'm, I'm hoping no drugs was found in his system because that's the last thing uh, that we need right now. I can just imagine the media just getting on top of this and taking another big fat crap uh, on professional wrestling. Um, I mean, it's, I mean, it's been making headlines. I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, it has. It's, you know, I, I really, mean, pretty Claire, much everybody's reporting it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even Yahoo. I mean, it's yep. it's freaking ridiculous. Major news media outlets. I mean, everybody yep. is on top of this freaking story. And and mm-hmm. I mean, everybody's going to be watching it very closely to find out those autopsy reports. And uh, watch, I'm telling you guys, watch, and I pray I'm wrong, but watch. If it turns out drugs are found in this young man's systems, they're going to sensationalize this to no no no. freaking end. And it's going to be ridiculous. And and it's going to be a huge black eye as Mm -hmm. WrestleMania is near. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I'm I'm preparing for it, but I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that, there was, there's no drugs in his system. Well, nine times out of ten, if there's no drugs found in the system, you guys probably won't hear any more about it. Um, you know, it'll it'll be the loss of his son, so on and so forth. But if there is, believe me, Lee is right. They will sensationalize it. It will be on every channel. It will be in every internet outlet, and you believe me, you will know. Um, unfortunately, that is really. Bad timing for the wrestling industry right now. Um, you know, it's very not the best thing, you know, that you could want to happen right now for, for darn sure. But, you know, the time will tell. You know, once the autopsy, autopsy results are released, then that's that's what will happen, you know, just kind of uh, just – as at that point, I wasn't really into wrestling, but Chris Benoit, I mean, believe me, I remember day after day of, of just reports, you know, about that story. 
Mm-hmm. So, unfortunately, negativity sells. Yeah, yeah, very unfortunate, very unfortunate. And it's like all the other good things that WWE has been embarking on. I mean, frick, they just launched that Superstar Charity uh, campaign. They just announced it this past Monday night on Raw where uh, they're getting WWE superstars to team up with celebrities such as musician Sting and a few other people that are going to be doing this whole big auction and uh, proceeds are going to be going to a very worthy cause, uh, I believe, to help out uh, the uh, Hurricane Sandy, right? I, I believe uh, that's what that's where the money is going to be going towards. Um, you know, huge black guy that, that this is uh, giving uh, right now. And, again, our, our condolences, you know, I'm, I'm never one that likes to sit up and speculate, and I, I just try to look at it from all different perspectives, and I'm just trying to prepare you guys that, you know, if something is in the system, it's drug paraphernalia, be prepared. And, you know, I want you guys, because I know you guys are going to be upset. I know you guys are going to be just cursing at some of these major news outlets. I just want you to be ready for that storm when it hits. And just know that, you know, it's nothing personal. These guys, they have to sensationalize stuff, you know, to get ratings. That's what it's all about. So, you know, pay it no mind. You know, and, you know, just think about the good that we have come to know about Reed. I mean, he heard it, you know, really nice uh, young kid, nice warm personality, uh, wrestling career, just... <laughs> I mean, the sky was the limit. I, I mean, you know, as you said uh, earlier, wrestled in Japan, and uh, he actually had uh, made his debut in WCW back in 1998 at the age of 10, uh, defeating Eric Bischoff uh, in a match. And uh, then he would team up with his dad to lose to Vince Russo and uh, older brother uh, David Flair. And, uh, you know, he, he's been no stranger. He's been in Ric Flair's corner both times that Flair had uh, got inducted into the Hall of Fame, one as a standalone performer and then the other with the Four Horsemen uh, was also there when Ric Flair had his emotional retirement on Raw, night after WrestleMania. Uh, the kid's definitely n- not familiar. Uh, uh, not uh, The kid is definitely familiar amongst the WWE Universe and um, definitely uh, heartbreaking uh, as it is. And, um, you know, we still have so much show that we got to cover, but talking about what had went down this week in wrestling, just in case you might have missed it. So let's go on ahead and let's rewind it back to what all had went down this past Monday night on WWE Raw, where it was a epic WWE Legends Q&A panel between John Cena and the People's Champion, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. And I was loving this Legends Q&A panel that had featured Bret Hitman Hart, the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, SmackDown General Manager, Booker T, Jerry the King, Lawler, and the hardcore legend himself, Mick Foley, and uh, I would have preferred to see an extended edition of this Q&A segment because I really would have preferred to see the legends kind of have a little bit more uh, into uh, Cena and Johnson, but it was just the right touch where the main focal point was asked by Booker T to John Cena, what is it that you know, John, that we don't know? As far as being able to beat The Rock at this year's WrestleMania, what is it that that you know that we don't? Because we need to know, where's this confidence coming from? And John Cena, he just is very quiet as as he can be. As throughout the Q&A panel, he was very quick with his rebuttals. But in this case, silent for about five, ten seconds, and he just mumbles into the microphone because... I have to. I have to beat him. And it didn't sound confident as we see the Q&A panel. They're looking a little bit perplexed. Rocky is looking perplexed. He's like, okay, I'm not believing that. You don't sound like you believe that. What's the 411, man? Well, what's this really about? Dig deep. Put your heart out there, man. What's going on? 
And Cena, he finally puts it out there. He says, you know, for the first time ever, and I've never said this in public, but Rocky, you didn't beat me. I beat myself. It was because of stupid mistakes that I made in our match, one of them being the people's elbow. That's what had cost me the match. I beat myself. I did all that showboating. This time around, that's not going to happen. I'm going to do everything humanly possible to beat you, and I will beat you this time. But once again, we see Dwayne The Rock Johnson, the way he's been countering John Cena, and that's just been really getting into his psyche there, is telling the C-Nation leader that, no, you're going to come up short. I'm going to beat you again. And you know what? All this talking, let's just go on ahead and let's just get it down right now while I wait for WrestleMania. And we see John Cena, Rock They just stand off. They're about to get it on. We see Cena throw that little you-can't-see-me-gesture out there. Rock, being the man that he is, he's not trying to have that crap. He pushes him, and it's on. Cena looking for the double AA doesn't happen as Rock is able to counter, and he hits him with the rock bottom, lays him out. I love the post footage that we had saw after Raw had went off the air, as we see John Cena just laying there, sits up, kind of has somewhat of a similar pose that he had at last year's WrestleMania after he lost to The Rock, and he's just sitting there just in utter disbelief. That was like the same look that he had once he kind of recovered from that rock bottom as he's just looking on at The Rock, who just wants him to bring it. We've heard the buzz From you guys all week long Many of you have taken the YouTube You've taken the Facebook You all are strongly under the impression That perhaps this could finally be the year That we have John Cena become heel Now if that is really the case If that is really the case That John Cena is going to go heel Honestly I don't really see it happening But If it were to go down, I think just the fact that this year's WrestleMania is going to be in the backyard of the New York area in New Jersey, I think it is one hell of a way to kick off a heel run. The only question that is asked, that should be asked right now, as me and co-host Diamond K have pointed out on our Tuesday night wrestling edition of the RCWR show, is, okay, Rock is locked until the Extreme Rules pay-per-view. No doubt there's probably going to be a rematch between he and Cena, as money-grabbing as it would be to have Rock versus Cena 3 At WrestleMania, I think at this point fans would really, really be irritated to no extent. Uh, So I think that if you're going to do a third encounter, Extreme Rules would be your best bet. Then afterwards, you have to think about who could possibly take on a heel, John Cena. We saw main event this past uh, Wednesday on the Ion channel. Kane was in action. He had defeated Antonio Cesaro. Um, poor booking just continues to happen for Antonio Cesaro at this point, Tammy. It doesn't even look like Antonio Cesaro is even going to be on the WrestleMania card. I mean, we've got like nine, probably ten matches already announced for WrestleMania 29, and Cesaro is nowhere in sight. We don't even know if this poor guy is even going to be part of the YouTube pre-show. Tammy, I definitely want to get your thoughts about Antonio Cesaro because we we both uh, even with Diamond K you know we've said numerous times that Antonio Cesaro great freaking throwback wrestler who you know he he definitely just speaks large volumes as far as a future world heavyweight maybe possibly even a WWE champion what's been your thoughts on the poor booking from WWE uh you know and keep in mind he's the United States champion um do you think this is uh continued poor booking on their part as they don't know what to do with him or do you think maybe they have some type of master plan for him after WrestleMania has come and gone? Well, actually at this point I think the booking is with WrestleMania, I think it's, you know, okay, let's see what kind of matches that we can do to get the butts in the seats. Um, I think he's definitely one phenomenal wrestler and has, you know, a great gimmick. Um 
and could really uh, could really have in in the right scenario and put with the right person could really be something else. But I, I think it, it'll probably, and I really think it'll probably be after WrestleMania. I, I think, you know, unless they're going to throw us a curveball, but I doubt it. You know, it seems to be that, that most of the matches are coming out as far as for, you know, basically what eight nights from today. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm just hoping that at least we get the. You know, there's still hope. I mean, WrestleMania is going to be like God. I think like three, four freaking hours. Hopefully, you know, we'll we'll maybe get to see an impromptu match or something like that with Cesaro. And uh, we know that uh, um, Santino Morella, he's supposed to be at WWE Access that weekend. Uh, hopefully, if he's at 100 percent, you know, because he has been out with an injury for the past couple of months, maybe we might even see Santino make a return, and maybe that could be an impromptu match. That way, of course, Cesaro goes over Santino, but I'm hoping we at least uh, will get to see him in an impromptu match. Uh, other action from main event, uh, the Funkadelics, uh, they have revealed the new tag team name for Tensai and Brodus Clay. They are now known as Tons of Funk. I was ready for Tons of Fudge, but it's oh. Tons <laughs> of Funk. And uh, wrapping it up was the Bella Twins. They finally saw some in-ring action as they had defeated the Funkadelics. Uh, that was actually a pretty damn good match. I've been loving it on main event that past couple of times now, at least within the past two months, it's been closing out on some really good Divas action. Um, I, I've been enjoying that a lot. Uh, let's switch gears now, talk about what had went down on TNA Impact Wrestling. It was the Open Fight Night edition. We saw Hulk Hogan, Sting, heated words, Tammy, as Sting got in Hogan's face and said, Look, I tried to apologize to you twice now. You're not hearing me. I'm going to try it again. You know, I'm sorry what went down with Bully Ray there. Hulk Hogan telling him, Look, it's because of you that all this crap has gone down. But Sting, he just had enough hair in that crap. He threw it right back in Hulk Hogan's face and said, look, you know, yes, I might have told you that, you know, you should give Bully a chance, but at the end of the day, Hogan, you're the authority mm -hmm. figure. You're the one that has to make the final decision. Man up for once. Hogan does man up, but it was kind of bitter the way he manned up. As uh, we uh, see Hulk Hogan tell Sting he needs to get the hell out of his ring and look like these two guys were about to throw it down right there. But security, they uh, ended up uh, coming in between the two and escorting Sting off the premises. Um, I know you had briefly uh, uh, saw that little encounter there. How did you like that plan out on TV there? <laughs> well... Um, Sting's right. The decision was ultimately his. Uh, you know, I can guide you wherever I want to or what my opinion is, but the final decision is yours, and if you don't like what happened, then that's just uh, kind of too bad. You know, unfortunately, he I don't think it should have went to the escort him out of the, you know, ring route, but... You know, obviously he's bitter and, and he, you know, he wants to take it out on everybody else. How have you been enjoying watching Impact Wrestling, you know, ever since they've announced that they uh, are going on the road? It's something, you know, I've been meaning to kind of pick your brain on since they made the announcement. And, I mean, we saw them in Chicago. Uh, they uh, just came off of a uh, good run in uh, Arkansas this week. And uh, a little bit before that, they had that lockdown uh, pay-per-view in San Antonio, Texas. I mean, the number of crowds in attendance. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's been freaking ridiculous. How have you been? How have you been enjoying the experience of uh, seeing Impact perform in front of a larger crowd? Well, honestly, for me, it seems that the product is better. Um, now that they're on the road, probably because they're feeding off of new audiences, you know, every time, new energy, so on and so forth, and thus making it a better overall experience, also a better product. Yeah, yeah. That's just my feeling and takeaway on it. Um, it really does seem to be making it a stronger product. You think about the impact wrestling 
from January 2012 and you compare it to now, it's like literally watching two different promotions almost. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, is. it is. And that's just a year difference. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's 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 just insane funny. You know, it's hats off to TNA. <laughs> I mean, uh, I also definitely want to get your take on this. As, as not really too much had happened on uh, open fight on the open fight night edition of Impact Wrestling, but uh, it looks like Bully Ray, Jeff Hardy, they're locked. Uh, they're going to be having a future match for that TNA. World Heavyweight title, it's going to be in a full metal mayhem match. And uh, if you are a veteran TNA wrestling fan, then you know what you can expect in that type of a match. I definitely want to pick your brain on this. How have you been enjoying Bully Ray as TNA champion? Because me and Diamond K, we went in depth about this on Impact Showdown Radio uh, this past Thursday night. And, uh, you know, there has been a ton of naysayers that have just been taking a big old fat shit on Bully Ray as the TNA champion. They think that he is a 40-plus, washed up, has been, that basically is getting the title because he lost weight. I mean, there's actually other guys, and I'm not going to even name their shows, but there's knuckleheads with their own little respected shows that are pretty much making it be, let's take a shit on Bully Ray hour as they're just ridiculing the man for a whole hour, talking about why he shouldn't be the uh, TNA champion and all that, and that TNA is just continuing to not look towards the future and go with their younger guys as a champion. Do you kind of agree with some of those sentiments? Do you kind of understand where this frustration from some folks that feel this way, or do you feel that they're completely way off? I don't think that they're way off. I I think that it's there's a, there's part of it that for me I think is part of it is the storyline that led up to him becoming champion. You know, f- part of it is that for me. <sighs> yeah, he lost weight and and he looks better, but I just don't know. I guess I've never seen him as champion until a little bit um so this last this run that has happened so i don't know what to compare it to um i see him as a fairly good champion but i tell you what jeff hardy is really has his eyes set on getting that championship back from what i saw last week wow you know he's like okay you know what this is what you took from me and now i'm ready to get it back so watch out yeah, yeah. I, I don't know, Tammy. I don't know. I mean, I mean, come. I mean, come on. Dig, dig deep here. Dig, dig deep. Dig, dig deep here. Okay. From what you've seen of the product, come on now. You, you started watching the product a whole calendar year now. You, you off and on, you've been watching TNA wrestling. So you saw the run of Bobby Roode. You've seen the run of mm-hmm. Austin Aries. You've seen the run of Jeff Hardy. Are you buying into Bully Ray as champion? Or, you know, is this a case where TNA really should not have, have gone this route? I mean, you know, my argument as well as, as Diamond's argument is, you know, yeah, he he got in shape because he wanted to do whatever was necessary to um, get himself that proper spotlight, but it's not because of the way that he became the champion. He got the title because he has just been on a hot streak for almost a year and a half. You know, he's reinvented himself, and it's like those other guys, they respectively had their time as champion. Right now, some would say it's Bully Ray's time, you know, Dig deep here. You, you've seen all those different guys be champion. Are you sold on Bully Ray as champion? No, I'm not. On I mean, I, I I I can agree with, um, you know, he's done this. He's done the work. He's put in the time. You know, it should be his time. But I don't see him as being as believable as some of the other former champions. Not for me, anyway. Mm-hmm. On, on what grounds? 
Um, just not believable, but but can you put some more to it? Well, I guess not believable because I just still see him as that same person. It, it doesn't. There's no difference now as opposed to then. That same persona, that same. I don't know. I just. I don't. I don't feel it is totally believable. I, you know, like for me, when Austin Aries won, it was like, oh, okay, great. You know, you you can see that that fire, that that you know, honeys, right. if that's what you want to call it. Mm-hmm. I, I don't see that with him. At least, you know, not from what I've watched. Mm. Yes. And. If you could be in charge of TNA, mm-hmm. who would your champion be? Thinking about who's on the roster, who would your champion? I would, I'd either give it. I honestly either Aries or Root. For wow. me, they made it interesting to to be into the main event matches, or I don't know. They really just brought it for me. Mm-hmm. You know, you could feel that they were champion, they were championship caliber. I, I don't feel that with 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 Bobby Roode. I don't. I feel like he's just an, an kind of like a jobber. I want to touch your. I want to touch t- touch uh, this note right here. Get your thoughts on this. So basically, let's say hypothetically speaking. And, and and we're saying hypothetically here, folks, it's never going to happen, but let, let's just pretend, okay? <laughs> All right, so Tammy, Slammiversary, Bully Ray defends his TNA World Heavyweight Championship against Joy Ryan. Does that make you want to check out the pay-per-view, or are you laughing your ass no. off? No. No, that doesn't make me want to check out the pay-per-view. I I think you're bringing up a very valid point, which is Bully Ray, you know, champion, doesn't exactly, you know, how the hell can you make a draw off of that? You can't, because you're making a draw off of, you know, the champion versus, you know, someone who is fairly new into the company and is making waves, but but it's not... a match that would get butts in the seats. Diamond's been saying it for the longest, um, and we've seen Hulk Hogan. He's been getting all these other surgeries. He's talking about having one last run as a champion. He wants to become a TNA World Heavyweight Champion. Diamond truly believes that we could eventually, whether we like it or not, we could be seeing a 50 or 60 plus year old Hulk Hogan get in the ring with Bully Ray. I mean, Hulk Hogan alone, I mean, he he's still a draw. The name still oh, yeah. sells. Oh, but, yeah. you know, f- from watching the product, as long as you've been watching it, would you be a little bit disappointed in seeing Hulk Hogan take on Bully Ray for the title? I've actually, in the back of my mind, I've actually seen that coming. Uh, I I think that if he is physically in shape enough to do so, I think that will absolutely happen because of the whole storyline that's happening right now. Um, will, will it be a draw? Oh, no doubt, no doubt, because he's getting back into the ring, just like you were, t- you know, talking with um, Tanya earlier and saying, you know. Even though they're older, they're still a draw. There's still people who want to check it out, wants to see what's going on, what's going to happen. Yes, it will be a draw. Do I personally want to see it happen? (sighs) That's a lot of pressure to put on your body at this point in time of your life. Mm -hmm. Physically, I don't want to see him do it. As far as the persona and what it would possibly do for the company, yeah, I could see that. Um, but physically, you know, it, it all boils down to can he really handle it? I'm going to go on record. I personally don't want to see it happen. Yeah, I've, I've tried to be, those of you that have been listening to our shows long enough, 
You guys know I usually try to be a little bit neutral. I, I'm I'm critical where it counts the most, but I would have to draw my line right here. I think that with a talent roster, talented roster at that, that TNA Wrestling has, and you have all these great young guys. I mean, you got Magnus. Uh, you have Big Rob Terry. Uh, you have a Christian York. Um, you have uh, Kenny King. Um, you have Matt Morgan. All these guys, you know, Jay Bradley. All these guys, you need to be utilizing them. You know, they're the future of the company. Sooner or later, we're going to have to get to that point where TNA is going to have to operate without a Hulk Hogan and an Eric Bischoff leading the way. You know, I think it would be going a huge step backwards to see Hulk Hogan become a TNA champion. And, and I pray to God that we we don't see this happen because this is nothing more than feeding the ego and yeah okay we can get inspired by that last Rocky movie that came out yes we we can all be inspired okay but I mean seriously that's that's movie that's fairy tale okay you know let's let's be for real right here you know this is so this is wrong on so many levels Tammy. Right. Well, not only that, you know, just kind of like you said, you know, it's a it's a story, and honestly, you're also saying when you do that kind of a, a title, first of all, you're you're absolutely right. It's feeding an ego, but you're also saying to your other talent is, look at me, and heck with you, and basically heck with you guys. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let me let me elevate me to this top person in the company, but not even con- taking into consideration all the talent that you have under you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. So uh, why not put the same energy and into that, that talent that you have under you and hype them up versus becoming uh, – a, a superstar, or I'm sorry, becoming the top person in the company at that point anyway, why not just ele- elevate them and be that person behind that person? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't want folks to get it twisted. I, I, I am happy that Bully Ray is, is a champion because I truly did feel that for his tenure in WWE, he wasn't really given the chance to really jump out there and shine. And we saw little traces of it when WWE broke him and Devon up and Devon was doing that whole Deacon Devon gimmick and Bully Ray. He was still the same Bully Ray. And, you know, his singles career looked like it was off to a decent start in WWE, but it looked as if WWE, they kind of kicked back and said, wait a minute. We don't want to push him to main event caliber. He doesn't have that six foot seven chiseled muscle look at that time. You know that that's the look that they liked in their guys as champion. You know they they just want him to be a jobber. So you know it, it, it took him a minute, but it was with that that passion and desire. It was with that drive when he came into uh, TNA to want to do better than what fans had come to know of his work in the WWE and ECW. So, I mean, it's definitely been a, a very good journey to see him be where he is right now. But, uh, Tammy, to echo uh, what you said right there, um, you know, maybe it's good that they have this whole Aces and Eights thing going on and kind of, kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for, kind of deflect that. A little bit, but, you know, those of us smart wrestling fans, you know, we know our stuff. We we just aren't buying into uh, the idea of a Bully Ray as champion. Uh, good for him. Glad he's finally getting his chance. But it's, it's, it's really a double-edged sword, Tammy. No doubt. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah, it, because... it, it, it really is. The fans, I mean, it already sounds like some fans aren't really behind him as champ. Yeah. Yeah. And that's somewhat half the battle. Yeah. 
Especially when you think about all the young guys that that's on the roster, and it's like, and, and you're going backwards, you know? It's, mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, SmackDown was this past Friday night. Rock made his return on the blue brand. We saw the return of the one and only, my name is Mr. <laughs> John Laronitis. Um, he just laid his ass out there with the... Uh, <laughs> he just laid his ass out. I I, I was happy to see John Laronitis uh, come on back there as uh, he interrupted The Rock telling his uh, his story, or as he liked to say, uh, story time with The Rock as uh, he was telling her uh, Pins- uh, Pittsburgh crowd how he, he loves coming through Hershey Park and he was looking for what you call it, and I I could definitely relate to him, especially when that old lady took the last one. I am <laughs> Fiend when it comes to a what you might call it. I will like go to whatever chocolate stores I can think of if I can't find them in a regular store. I, I love my what you might call it, and and I, you know I, I thought I was like the only crazy person as soon as he said that because sometimes I'll ask people um, we'll get into the topic of candy and I'll say have you ever had a what you might call it? And they're like the fuck is that? I was like you don't know what you might call it? He's like no. I was like. And I'm describing it to him, and, you know, it's like, I don't know, I've never, you sure that exists? It's like, of course it exists. And it's like, so we we'll hear the Rock say, you know, he's looking for a whatchamacallit. It's like, yeah, that's that's so me, man, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the nice little moment that we saw right there. Um, not really too much had happened on SmackDown, though. I mean, when you really think about it, I mean, the two hours, and normally I'm, I'm into SmackDown, but I found myself fast-forwarding after The Rock did his thing. Uh, I know we saw Chris Jericho. Uh, he had a uh, pretty good match there with Wade Barrett. Uh, Wade looked like he was getting ready to get the W, but he had one too many words with The Miz, and a uh, little bit of a miscue there as it cost Barrett big time as uh, Jericho was able to get the win via code breaker, uh, thus feuding the little robbery there between uh, Miz, Wade Barrett. What's been your take on uh, Miz in a nutshell, him being a top baby face and all, and and uh, um, trying very hard to pay homage to uh, Ric Flair as he does a poor job of that figure four leg lock? <laughs> Well, you know, Miz has gotten a, a little better uh, in in my book, per se. Um, I actually like, you know, it's kind of funny. In retrospect, I actually like Miz either way. Um, he has that character that, that he has actually pulled off both. Um, he's more believable as a heel, no doubt. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. But, you know, it's a welcome change. Um, to see Miz as, as a baby face. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I certainly like the new look. He, it makes him look older, more distinguished. Um, and, you know, basically his part. It, it really does become of him. <laughs> it's, it's It's crazy. It's crazy. It really is. Uh, I'm trying to think for you guys uh, if there was anything else that really stood out from SmackDown. Uh, this past week, and 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 really, the, unfortunately, guys, uh, as we we usually like to go in depth about SmackDown, there really wasn't too much that really had jumped out there for SmackDown. I mean, Rock returned, John Laurinaitis returned. We hadn't seen John Laurinaitis, God, uh, uh, since he got fired, um, as uh, John Cena had uh, did the uh, uh, unthinkable there. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, he had uh, defeated. God, I'm testing my memory. I'm not going to even test it right now because my mind's on like a whole <laughs> bunch of stuff right now. Um, but we hadn't seen John uh, John Laronitis in a damn good minute. Um, he looked good. It was nice to see him back. Uh, of course, he's uh, no longer the uh, vice president of talent and relations. That's officially now gone to Triple H. But uh, they were pretty much rehashing a lot of the uh, main matches that's going to be going down at this year's WrestleMania and uh looks like we finally saw Big Show, Sheamus, and Randy Orton get on the same page uh, as they were in a uh, six-man tag match. Uh, they took on Antonio Cesaro uh, as he teamed up with Rhodes Scholars. Damian Sandow, Cody Rhodes picked up the W right there. Shield members tried to come out post-match, but uh, the team of Orton, Sheamus, Show, they were able to 
beat their asses out of the uh, arena as they took to the crowd to leave out that way. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Normally I'm in the SmackDown, but it really just was like, were you kind of picking up the same vibe from from the little that you had saw that it was kind of like a a fast four? It was like a lot of rehash there. Well, honestly, for me, from what I saw, you know, as far as after The Rock, um, it really looked more like, Sorry, but it looked more like a promotion for w, the the WrestleMania yeah. you know, show. Pretty much, okay, this is a match. Okay, here's what we're going to give you for WrestleMania match. Here's what we're going to give you for WrestleMania, and, and more of a promotion than a show. Yeah, 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 it, it, it really was. Uh, boys and girls, I want you guys to do us a huge favor, and uh, if you want to go and get that more in-depth fix of what you might have missed from Raw, and uh, Impact Wrestling this week. Be kind, rewind, check out our shows in the archive section up on blogtalkradio.com slash the RCWR show, and you'll be able to check them all out. We had some really great uh, in-depth discussions, myself and co-host Diamond K. Check that stuff out. And um, I think that's going to do it. You can also check us out in the iTunes store. Um, Just use the keywords, the RCWR show. Episodes also available on Stitcher for all your respected portable devices. And, uh, Tammy, I I think that's going to do it. Let's show some love one more time uh, for our guests. And I know you were telling me uh, in between uh, songs there that you had, like, that interview. It was a damn good interview, too. Uh, I want to take my hats off one more time to the beautiful and the lovely uh, Miss Tanya Medina from the rock band Tanandra for stopping by. Great in-depth interview. If you missed it in its entirety, just give us a few minutes. We'll actually remix this, and you'll be able to check it out. And uh, that's going to do it. We will be at the Verizon Center in Washington, D.C. this coming Monday night, April 1st, to cover WWE Raw. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook. Uh, We'll be posting pictures and tweets all night long. RCWR t-shirts will be available at our website for sale this Tuesday. On behalf of the beautiful and the lovely co-producer Tammy, I'm the Black Avenger, Lee Sanders, wishing you all to be safe and be kind to one another. Take care, folks. Have a good weekend. And happy Easter. (laughs) Happy Easter.